Hello, it's Burgess Taylor, and today I was going to talk about diversity in book. I got so far as to almost finish the editing, and then I realized, you know, that's not what really was in my heart to talk about. So today's coffee chat is going to be about self-care, about self-love, and um, yes, yeah, so, um, let's get started. Grab your cup of coffee, or your cup of hot tea, or hot cocoa, or hot apple cider, or your glass of wine, or chocolate milk, or whatever your preference is, and let's get started. So I'm going to give you a quote by Victoria Erickson. I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and what I think about self-care and self-love and things. Um, Kelly Ann Maddox does something every year in September called self-love. She asks for video responses. This is and isn't a video response. I'm going to talk a little bit more about self-care and about different things, not just self-love, but it is also a video response. I'm going to read this. Today, I'm going to fall in love with the way I belong to myself, regardless of any and all situations or circumstance or commitment or outside happening. I'm going to fall in love with the way I refuse to settle for less than vibrant aliveness, less than what feeds and fuels this energy wildly, fully, infinitely, freely, because I'll allow nothing on the outside to detract from, limit, lessen, or shrink this or me. So the mind is a powerful tool. You can use it to hinder or help, to praise, to criticize, and I've done all of those. I've hindered myself as well as helped myself. I've been my own worst critic to the point where I've even criticized, uh, made excuses, downplayed when someone else praised me or complimented me. So I wrote in my journal, today I'm no longer going to accept those negative thoughts or actions. I refuse to be my own worst critic. If someone compliments me, I'm going to smile and say thank you. If I make a mistake, I'm going to learn from it and pat myself on the back for trying. From now on, I will go to bed with a positive thought and wake up with a positive thought. I'm going to remember that I am more than good enough, that I am special, that I'm unique, talented, worthy, loved, and loving, lovable, that I am determined, strong, brave, kind, passionate, and capable, that I am me that I can just be me. If you think about like self-love, sometimes we have to remember what we were before, before the world told us what we were supposed to be. If you are from my generation and I am 49 years old, then you know that we were just kind of really getting started with women's lib. I mean, women didn't get the right to vote until the twenties. I was born in the late sixties. So women had only been voting for like 40 years, 40 something years when I was born. My mom comes from the generation that men worked, women stayed at home mostly. My mom did work on and off, but I was raised to believe that you get married, you have children, you can work or not work depending, um, but your main job, your main focus was your family, your husband, your spouse, your kids. Those were your main focuses. If you were to think about yourself, then that was actually kind of selfish. And that's not a good thing because especially as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, as a friend, as a, a whatever you are, you have to have time for me. You have to have me time. You have to have time for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. You have to praise yourself because sometimes nobody else is going to do it for you. There are other people who will praise you and you need to be able to accept that praise. But I had a really hard time. I was in emotionally, uh, mentally abusive relationships prior. Um, not every single one, but there were a few. I lost my father when I was really young. Um, I went up seven, almost eight. So there were some abandonment issues. I have depression and anxiety along with ADHD. So sometimes I don't take good care of myself because of the depression. Sometimes because of the anxiety, I overanalyze things and I exaggerate the feelings of negativity because of that anxiety. And I have to catch myself sometimes. I have to make a point to have some time alone 
to relax, to take care of myself, to do things for myself that give me that positive energy to reinforce my creativity, to reinforce my self-love. And I think it's really important. I've talked about self-care during NaNoWriMo. I talked about taking my life back in April, losing weight. I talked about walking and morning pages and different things that I am doing to help improve myself and my life, my creativity, things like that. But I've talked about self-doubt. I've talked about depression. And you know, one of the things that I've learned over the last few months, especially over the last few years, is that having a support system, what Julia Cameron calls your believing mirrors, extends past just your immediate circle, but it does include your immediate circle. Uh, my husband is really supportive. I think I wouldn't be nearly as happy and as positive as I am if it weren't for that fact. But I have to get some of that from myself, work myself emotionally and mentally um, to be independent as well. When I think about certain things about self-care, I think about my spirituality, I think about my mind, I think about my body, um, I think about taking care of different things about me, there are different aspects to me. So one of the things that I've been trying to do is to drink more water, to take at least 15 to 30 minutes a day and read, to journal, um, brain dump, morning pages, you can call it whatever you like. I try to do that every day, it doesn't happen every day. I try to have some alone time. The artist dates have been helping with that, but sometimes it's not really an artist date so much as it's just some me time. I've been thinking more and more about how you can't pour from an empty cup and, you know, trying to do things that make me happy little things. And at the same time, trying to take care of a household and the people that are in my life and to spend quality time with them and not just have me time. I mean, I don't, See, that's where the selfish thing comes in. I mean, if you take too much me time, you're being selfish. If you don't take any me time, then you're not being selfish enough. It's like a catch-22. So one of the things I wanted to talk about just for a minute is how you focus on gratitude. That really helps a lot. It helps your mindset. If you think about what you can do, little tiny things like taking a walk or taking a hot shower or a long hot bath, a bubble bath, or... Um, going to visit a friend or going to have coffee with a friend or a dinner date with a friend, going to see a movie by yourself or with your spouse or with a family member. You can think about all different kinds of things. I think if you listen to what your intuition, what your gut tells you, if you listen to what your body tells you, if you listen to what your surroundings and all are telling you, if you listen to the cues, you pick up on a lot of different things that maybe you weren't really paying attention to before. I noticed that the more I walk and I get outside and get the fresh air and the sunshine, the better I feel. The more I take better care of myself physically, the more I eat fruits and vegetables, less carbohydrates, the more I drink water, that kind of thing, the better I feel. The more I listen to my body's cravings, I was craving juice a lot not long ago. Lately, I've been craving vegetables more. I also have been listening to my body's cues when it comes to taking a nap and trying to get um, more sleep, trying to get my body on a better schedule for sleep. I've been trying to listen to my creative cues, my need to be creative. And um, doing things and be, having a support system and stuff have helped me with that too. I've actually started writing. I've been doing the summary, my synopsis. And stuff for the novel that I'm going to be writing in November for NaNoWriMo. I've got the new um, trifold poster board to put my storyboard on. I have found the notebook I want to use for that novel. But like this close to being ready to actually start filming the process where I go through and do the outline and stuff for that. Another thing I've been thinking about is the sense of Loneliness that comes from being a writer or an artist, these are solitary endeavors mostly that can sort of aid or harbor those feelings of loneliness because you are alone a lot. And 
I need alone time. I need me time. I need that some of that solitude and quiet to do certain things. But at the same time, I need the closeness and the support and the, the quality time with my husband, with, with my family, with my grandson, with friends. I need that. I need that just as much as I need the alone time and the me time. We all have issues, whether it's because we were in a mentally or emotionally or physically abusive relationship before, whether we were um, mentally or physically abused as a child, whether we have depression or anxiety or any other mental illness. It's really important to mind yourself taking one step at a time, just one little tiny step at a time towards that self-care really helps. It does. Like I said, the more I get outside in the fresh air and the sunshine, sometimes even when it's raining, sometimes my, I need that spiritually to get out when it's raining. I, I love the sound of rain. I love rain. I love storms. And I have been known to go outside and dance in the yard when it's raining, whether it's nighttime or daytime. Me, art, drawing, painting, those things really help a lot. And I think it's important to remember those things. Sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. Sometimes we forget what's important to us and we let it slide because we get so busy with daily life, with responsibilities and obligations. And I've been trying to find balance because I know once November hits, I'm going to be very busy. Not only will I be still working on some of the projects I'm working on now, like the Dark Tower series, that reading project. I'll also be finishing up Finding Water. I'll be writing for NaNoWriMo. I'll still be doing blog posts and videos. Yeah, so I don't know that in November I will be doing daily videos. That's a lot. I may very short ones or I may do a week a recap of the week. I'm not sure. I haven't figured that out. I have a lot on my plate and NaNoWriMo is going to add to that. And I don't want to stretch myself so thin that other things suffer, especially my self-care. And that sounds a little selfish. And I have to remind myself that it's not selfish. I can't give if I don't have anything to give. You can't pour from an empty cup. I'm going to get into this a little bit more. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to do another video about self-care. I would like for people to put some comments down about what you do to help take care of yourself, to help love yourself. What are your suggestions? What are your questions? Um, thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Bye.